using for a while or some aspect of faith. And by attaining this faith, we can able to get back our lost intelligence. What is our lost intelligence? Jacob's heritage. All of us are given the blessings of Jacob's heritage, all of us, but somewhere along the line, we have faltered and we have lost what is given to us by the Lord our God. Because our God is a God of blessings and He will always want to bless us richly. And today we see we have woes and struggles in the place of our work. We see we have problems in our home, we have problems in our individual life. We also see poverty as well as financial woes, sickness, we may be innocent. Why is it? And we've been praying, 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 nothing as we seem to be working. Nothing we become so discouraged in prayer. Alright, we can pray but nothing works because here the word says we're not asking to be given, but it's not given. Why? We need to understand the concept of our prayer. How do we pray? We have seen very classically the Lord's Prayer, where the Lord has included three important, a four important elements in it which we don't see. Of course we have seen the first one is adoration. Second one is called the confession. And the third one is known as thanksgiving, and the fourth is known as supplication and petition. Alright, we are supposed to see the fourth today. But let me just tell you a couple of things now that to bring an attention to our Lord, to bring the Lord to hear us. The first most important thing in prayer that we need to understand that we have seen all spiritual giants in the scripture that follow this concept. They brought about undiluted worship, undiluted praise, undiluted adoration, undiluted worship. And then they begin to worship. And when you begin to worship God, God takes delight in our worship and He turns His face towards us. We have seen David, however problem that he faces, the struggle he faces, he failed not to adore the Lord our God before he brings his problem. But the problem with us, when we begin to pray, we pour out all our words on the God. Alright? But the thing is that we miss the boat is that we need to bring about praise and worship in our private life. We have seen in corporate worship where praises are being emphasized by the Lord in order to see victory. The Lord told, I want you to walk around for seven days the wall of Jericho wall. And on the seventh day, I want you to walk seven times. And on the seventh time, you just do this. Raise your voice with your trumpet, and you will see what you will see. The whole fortified wall tumbled down. Not a single weapon was used. What it was used was worship, praise. And God wanted that to really happen. And if you want to see a breakthrough in your life, if you want to see a breakthrough in everything of your life, your work, your financial sickness, I think what we have failed today is to go in worshiping and adoring our Father and bringing all glory and honor to the Lord before you bring every other means of you. We have seen Daniel. How Daniel, in chapter 6 of Daniel, we will turn to Daniel, chapter 6, verse 10. The king Nebuchadnezzar put up a big, large God, we didn't know who he was, in the day of Dura. And he says at a point of a time in the, in the trumpet of Lord, every of the citizens has to bow down and to worship. If anyone who fails to do it will be thrown into the lion's den. And there you are, you had some Jews living in that land as exile, worshipping the Lord God, the true God. And they knew they cannot bow down to any other God then rather than to Yahweh. And so when the, the trumpet was blown, all of them before Nebuchadnezzar bowed down, but there's one man who refused. And that angered him, his satraps and commissioners and laid trap to him. And they told the king, O king, one of your commissioners refused to obey your degree which was signed by you. And where else that you will be disgraced if you know if one of your subjects fails to bow down and worship? And the king was furious. And the king called who it was, and it was Daniel. And Daniel, knowing the edict, the decree was signed. That's what you find that in, Gen in, in Daniel chapter 6. 
And then he was saying he knew. He knew his consequences. And yet that man, you look at verse 7, he looked up into the windows towards Jerusalem and he was worshipping God. The point is, he was not crying out to God, God save me. Save me from this king. He did not say that. He was worshipping God. What happened my friend? He was thrown into the lion's den ultimately. And the time of the Persian king, whenever someone had been thrown into a lion king, I'm sorry, the king, the lion, sorry, they will normally, would not feed the king, the lion for about two to three days. And so the lions will be pretty hungry. And upon seeing a prey into it, will be torn into pieces. And so the king ordered Daniel to be thrown under the lion's den and he was thrown. What happened? The Lord shut the mouths of the lion. You know what was the secret? He worshipped God. He praised God. And I hope that if you all can read this book, Prison to Praise, the powers of praise, the series of book, you will find how people who have problems in life, problems with their bosses, problems with their sickness, they just begin to worship God because their sickness was given. But the problems they were facing. And you can read every testimony in that book. How God averted issues in their life and brought about victory. It is all through your lips, my friend. Worshipping God in adoration. Learn from the scriptures. Learn from the Lord's prayer. Hail Lord be thy name. When he started, our Father in heaven, hail Lord be thy name. He worshipped God. Then only came the supplication. Then only came the confession and thanksgiving. And we see how the Lord himself has thought as a prayer. And so in our own personal life, how many of us have gone and just worshipped the Lord our God? How many of us have really gone and just time been spent giving all honor and every praise and glory and honor and undoubted worship to the Lord our God? Have you done that? Paul said, I speak more than you in tongues. Praying in tongues is another good way to receive power, to receive victory. And we have seen how God has used men of God. David is one example. So is Nehemiah. When he saw the walls were broken, he gave glory to God. Yes, he never cried to God. He gave glory to God and he worshipped God. And then only he went on to confession. He said, I and my forefathers have sinned. And we see how in record of 52 days, the entire Jerusalem wall was built. Can you see the worship that man brought? So was Ezra. So was Nehemiah. So was Daniel. And so is Esther. Alright, when the edict was passed against the Jews, she called on for a fast and in the initial fast she failed not to worship Yahweh and we saw finally what happened Haman was angry we see how God gave victory to his children it is merely through the adoration and worship and praise so friends in your prayer change so that you can able to get the heart of God you can get the attention of God when you begin to worship God, bring adoration to Him, and worship the Lord of God with all your heart. Then bring your confession to the Lord. The second is confession. Confession of our sin. 1 John 1.10 tells us, If you say I have not sinned, we all become liars. That's what the word says. So we need to go before the Lord. And second, after the adoration and worship, is to confess of our sins to the Lord. We need to be clean. We need to be right. So the confession of sin, let me tell you this. You need to be right with men, or right, then only you can be right with God. Matthew chapter 6, 16 tells us this clearly. If you do not forgive someone in earth, Heavenly Father do not forgive you. If you have forgiven someone on earth, the Heavenly Father has forgiven you. Imagine. Look at our communication has been cut off because there are people that we cannot forgive. There are people that we cannot even talk. There are people that we cannot even greet. Aren't you a hypocrite? 
And to be in hypocrite in prayer, then we can go the irony of it, then we can go and pray, but where you cannot forgive someone in your family members, or within the church, or within the community, or within your extended families. My friend, your prayer will not go before your ceilings. Your problems and woes will remain because you have not learned to forgive. Search your heart. If you want healings in your life, if you want to see bring deliverance in your life, if you want to see victorious in your life, you need to forgive someone that you have not forgiven. Easily spoken, but it's hard to practice. But you can always tell the Lord, alright? The Lord says, love your enemy. You know, we are, so many of us are so irony of it, we come for the Holy Communion. We don't make things right with God. We are actually drinking the wrath of God. Let me tell you this. Don't take it lightly. Just because you are the members of the fellowship of the church, you have the right to come and take the Holy Communion. All right, but you are bringing the wrath of God if you are not right with anyone of anywhere, your home, your church, your community, your extended family, or even in your workplace. Be right. All right, if you forgive them, just forgive them and you will be all right. Whether the party forgives you or not is none of your business. It's your work is to forgive and move on. And that's it, my friend, why today many of us are living in poverty. Why is it that today many of us are living in misery? Why was many of us are still having sickness after sickness? It's because we have not forgiven. Your prayer has not gone above the city. This is it. We all are living a hypocritical life. I will speak about it. I am a human being too. I've been criticized. I've been kicked down hard. But I've learned one thing. To forgive. And I always say to myself, the truth will set me free. And that's about it. I can move on. And if I see my enemy, I still can talk to them. I have no issues. Because you know why? I've forgiven them. I can sleep peacefully. I'm probably telling this. But 20 years ago, I would have a struggle on this aspect. But over the time, the Lord has taught me. All right, I would need a shepherd. And I myself am not an example. I'm not worthy to stand in to speak this word to you. So friends, forgiving one another, only then your prayer being heard. So you can ask, why is it I'm not successful? Why is it that I have my problem? Why is my business is not expanding? Why is it I'm having woods in my workplace? Why is it my family is having this issue? Why is it my sickness? Why is my financial? All the whys you have the answers all lies within you. Because you have not learned to forgive someone. Touch your heart and say this morning, my friend, I'm convicted in my spirit. Every one of you here have not forgiven someone. Be honest to yourself. Be honest to God. You just came into Holy Communion. In order to want to drink your blessings or drink your wrong, is absolutely in your hands. Choose it. The Lord gave a life, choice to the people of Israel. You choose life or you choose death. And the people responded, we choose life. Choose. So friends, why is it a chronic sickness still inside you? Have you wondered? We can say the Lord's Prayer like an express train, my friend. But stop to see what is it has got in you. So that's confession. All right, if you're struggling in areas of bitterness, struggling in the areas of unforgiveness, struggling in the areas of hatred, you need to work that out. And that's what the Bible tells us and Paul tells us in Philippians 2 12, work out your salvation. Amen. You know what he says? We are not supposed to work for our salvation. Huh? Salvation is given by the grace of God. But when he said, work out your salvation, all right, by you receiving Jesus Christ into your heart, your forgiveness for someone does not just come like that. You have to work through it. That's why we call it the renewed mind. So work it out. If you want to be successful, if you want to receive the Jacob's heritage of blessings, you need to work this out that you need to forgive and let go. All right? And the third one we saw about Thanksgiving. We need to thank God for everything that you are right now. Without Him, you won't be standing, you won't be sitting, you won't be having a roof over your head. And every blessings we have seen how God has blessed us. So we count the blessings. Don't take God for granted. And thank God for that. And the fourth thing that we're going to see is 
supplication, petition. Let's all turn to the book of Philippians chapter 4. I'm not going to talk about supplication today, but I'm going to talk one important meta, all right? That is found in verse 6. It says here, be anxious for nothing. In the English translation, it tells you, do not worry for anything. Worry some. Now, before you get into your supplication, my friend, okay, we are worried about so many things. Now, how to avoid this worry? There are three steps that I'm going to give it to you. If you want to get your worrisome, your anxiety, you want to get that out, you want to kick that habit out, there are three things that you ought to do. And if you could do the three things, you can regime it out, all right, and you would not have got so-called the anxiety attack. It's of the late, and we only heard of a heart attack, all right? But now we have heard about known as anxiety attack. Now what is anxiety attack? Anxiety attack will ultimately lead you to heart attack. But anxiety attack would be restlessness, breathlessness, uneasy, sleeplessness. All right? All the nests are coming in here. All right? Because you are anxious in your spirit. You are so anxious in your spirit. All right? And then it tells you that you are hurt. All right? And so... We are talking about something that when you are hurt in your spirit, my friends. So we should not, and we should not and do not tolerate anxiety. Because this will injure your souls. Okay? It will bring injury to your spirit. When you begin to allow anxiety walk into your life, into your spiritual life, into your physical life, you are bringing injury to your souls, let me tell you that. Alright? And they will play you around. Alright? They play you around in every aspect. So, when you allow that, remember Jesus said, Those who are very and heavy and laden, come unto me. And what he said? I will give, I will you, give you rest. Where? On your in your soul. soul. Speak that word of God carefully, man. He never said to your heart, into your souls. Because your soul has been affected. Alright? And so, when anxiety gets into you, when worries are coming into you, your spirit is hurt and that's where you fall into sickness. Psalms 32. Let's turn to it. Psalms 32 is about David. Alright? We see how his body wasted away. Look at verse 2. How blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Right? Then what he said? When I kept silent about my sin, my body wasted away, my groaning all day long. Right? And it continues in verse 4. Day and night your hands are heavy upon me and my vitality was drained away with fever. Imagine, he had fever. It was his spirit was hurt. Not your physical body. Huh? You can be fat and round and nice and lovely like a dandelion. But it's your spirit, his inside is hurt. Alright? His inside is injured. Your inside spirit is weak. And that's where you fall into sick. And that's where the chronic illness still lingers on. Because there is some areas of anxiety is feeling inside you, my friend. You need to work that out. Okay? So, how to get it out? The first thing is, permit the peace of God. I repeat, huh? you permit the peace of God to become a garrison. I'll explain to them. It's a military word. Become a garrison to your heart and to your mind through Jesus. Right now, what does it mean? You need to allow, all right, you need to allow the peace of God as a boundary, as a protection, all right, as a cover up. To cover up what? Your mind and your heart. All right? You need to, first of all, to cover your hearts and mind. And that's the reason you find in chapter 4, all right, look at verse. Seven. 
of Philippi. And the peace of God which surpasses all uh, comprehension will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Isn't that very well spoken? Isn't that well printed out there? You need to guard, my friend, with the peace of God over your heart and mind. You need to do that very well so that your spirit, all right, your spirit will not be injured. So you first of all have to allow the peace of God. You need to come into the peace of God to protect your heart and your mind. Your heart and the mind is the forefront. Huh? Let me tell you this. Your mind is the one that receives the message. And then it goes into your heart for postmortem. All right, for pondering. All right, then if you come across, you find people who are, you know, heavy in their, in their mind, they lose their head. All right, they become, they have to go to the Nirmata. And then if you are strong up in your head, your heart gives way. I come across people who had died of heart attack. Wow. You know, in 1998-97, the financial crisis was coming in. Stock market fell flat like that. And I know when someone who had played a stock for almost about 20 million died on the spot in the stock market. He just died because everything gone, his heart couldn't take it. All right, his heart couldn't take it. All his 20 million gone just down the drain. And you see that people die because their heart gets away. And so this is where we have to guard our mind and our heart. And by the peace of God, you need to have a daily walk with God, all right, and have that garrison. And if you find in an army garrison, as you will find we have all are fortified. Despite with all the fence around, we have sentry guards. All right, every half an hour, there will be two soldiers who will be rounding around the entire uh, garrison or the army base, all right, so that there will be no infiltration. Extra people will not come in. So this is something that we have to go extra mile, my friend, to guard our mind, guard our heart, and by heart, by the peace of God. So we need to receive matters into our heart. All right, when you receive an issue, how do you look at it? How do you see it? All right, if any issue that it displeases you, what does it happen? Anger comes in, disappointment comes in, and then you fling your words, and that's why you lose your testimony. If you can hold yourself by having the peace of God, you can analyze the situation. And you can able to handle issues diplomatically, not crudely, not rudely. Any for matter for that matter, any issue for that matter, that will show how you have got your mind and your heart by the peace of God. If you only have the peace of God, my friend, you'll be a better person now. You will not have worrisome, you will not be having any kind of anxiety into you. You won't be having an anxiety attack inside you. You will not worry. You can sleep peacefully. Have you come across people who cannot sleep? I have ministered so many millions, I believe so. Millions to my thousands. All right? They can tell me I cannot sleep. You know why? Their mind is wide awake. They cannot face tomorrow. They do not know how to face tomorrow. My friend. This is where, all right, you have to see the second point. The second point is this. You need to renounce, all right? You need to renounce your worry. Renunciation. You need to renounce your worrisome. That is important, my friend. You need to renounce it. Why am I worrying? Why am I worrying? That's a key question you have to ask. All right, we sing songs, but we all are still living as, you know, hypocrite. All right, what a prayer. We have got a friend we have in Jesus, a song. Everything, take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we taking everything? We are not. A cumbersome and Lord, take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we taking the cumbersome and Lord? We don't. All right. And the Lord has told us very clearly, you need to renounce this worry, my friend, by prayer. Now look at this verse, we will see that. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Let us read 
23 verses 26. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow, no, they do not reap, no, they gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And are you not more, much more than they are? Verse 27. And who are you by being worried can add a single hour to his life? 28. And why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the little, the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. Friends, Jesus says here, why are we bothered about? Look at the birds in the sky. Are they worried? All right, we love to have birds, okay? It is sin to breed birds, let me tell you this. All right? I don't know whether some of you got birds. If you have birds, please take it a pinch of salt. Huh? You know why? God has given the birds what? wings to fly but you put them in a miserable cage I put you in a cage you like it huh? think about it huh? they are lovely birds okay that's not too much I think we had Pastor Martin with us from India Chandaya. he's got a lovely parrot all right they have got a big cage like this but they open it up it flies into their bedroom comes in and come back all right they have even opened the door it goes flies out and come back they are keeping as a pet, but at the same time they are given freedom to the earth because it's got feathers to fly. But we are so cruel. All right, that's the only word that I can use. We captivate these animals into little cage. You know how misery they will be. Have you ever thought about them? How miserable life they are in the cage when they are supposed to be going from uh, from from tree to tree. Sky to sky, singing with the sweet sound of it. All right? That is what God created. But here we are, putting them in the cage. I'm not saying you cannot have birds as your, as your pet. You can, please. Train them. All right? Train them so that they will be with you. They can fly out in the day and they can come back in the night time. I have friends who have got birds. Let them free and they will come back in the night. You can see them somewhere in the ceiling behind all right, it's a bird. And the bird has God known my master is here. He feeds non time. All right, and also given me freedom. That's it. So friends, understand this. All right, God has given wings for birds to fly, not to catch them. All right. So if I cage you, surely you will not like it. All right, similarly. Yeah. Now coming to the point. All right, God says, look at the birds. Or even look at your birds also. Now. They don't worry about food. They know the master will give food. They know the master will give water. Do they cry out? Uh, they come and bite you up. They don't. They know they will come and give food. I'll eat and have babies into the cage. All right? Don't know now. They are so bitter with the owner. They have not set me free. Right? Look at the birds. They fly around. Do they worry about the next meal? Or we worry about tomorrow. We worry about our future. We worry about literally everything, you know, about... Tomorrow we bring it today and we worry. And what the Lord says, by you worry, look at verse 27. Can you add a single hour to your life? In fact, you reduce that. Huh? Alright? By you worrying, you reduce your life. Do you know that? Because you're worrying some, your anxiety some, all that brings. So my friend, you need to renounce worry some. Worry will come anytime. It can walk through the back door, come through the window, come through the roof. It can come anytime. But every time that you're attacked with worrisome, you take it to the Lord in prayer and commit it. Renounce it. Probably you write it down and say, what is what I'm worrying about? All right. I'm worrying about my future. All right. We always talk about our future. We talk about tomorrow. We talk about this. We talk about I want to do this. I want to do this. And you do not know what is happening now in your life. So, friend, renounce your worry. That's the second thing. And the third one, all right? Do not cast away your confidence. You know, the Lord has given you a confidence in your life. The Lord has given you a confidence in your life. Confidence is opposite of worrisome. Confidence is opposite of anxiety. Let us all turn to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 6. Sorry. 
chapter 3. Look at verse 6. You can underscore verse 6. But Christ was faithful as a son over his house, whose houses we are. And if we hold fast our confidence and the boast of our hope firm until the end. We hold on with confidence until the very end. You find that the Lord's faithfulness upon our life. Confidence. When worry, sin, when worry comes, all right, when you're simply worried, what we happen is that you lose hope. You feel feeble. All right, you feel hopelessness. All right, and that's where the anxiety comes in. But where is when you have a confidence in the Lord? That's the confidence that you need to build yourself. All right? Very much into the Lord. Then only you will know how to overcome. Now in the same book, chapter 6, look at verse 11 and 12. Or verse 11. And we desire that each one of you show diligence to, to realize that full confidence of hope until the end. Full confidence, hope until the end. You're talking about faith. If you have full confidence until the very end, you will see success. All right, you will able to see. Look at verse twelve that you will uh, will not be sluggish, but imitators of those who, through faith and patience, inherit the promises. You will inherit the promises of Jacob's heritage. That's what the Bible says. You need to have confidence, my friend. You need to have confidence in the Lord. All right, when you have the confidence in the Lord, all right, there is no reason for you to worry. There is no reason to worry about your future. You have no reason to worry about anything about or something. All right, then you need to understand this very well, my friend. Okay, and now looking at chapter 10. Chapter 10, look at verse 35. Maybe just verse 35. Verse. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence which has a great reward. So straightforward to us, isn't it? Now the writer says, do not throw away your confidence which has a great reward. Amen. You don't throw away your confidence by worrying some, by anxiety. My friend, when you worry, when you have anxiety, you have no faith. That's about it. Right, you have no more faith <clears throat> because you begin to look upon yourself thinking of your own <clears throat> miserable strength you can overcome <clears throat> then you can always able to overcome with your cleverness of your mind or with your strength or with your influences you can never all right remember that we are feeble before the lord so you work your confidence don't throw that confidence away by your worrying some if you are worried about your boss tomorrow if you're worried about some big bill has to be made tomorrow, if you have something that coming up at the deadline tomorrow which you feel you are inadequate, if you're having struggles in your family or in your place of work or your business, whatever you are, all right, stop worrying. Worrying is your defeat. <clears throat> or worrying and getting anxiety is your defeat. Have the confidence in the Lord. Knowing God will bring things fast. Believe in them. During the time of recession, okay, businessmen were hardly hit, uh, very hard hit. Uh, all businessmen hit because payment all was stuck. All right, everywhere you turn to, they also saying, we also got, you know, my payment has not come, how to pay you? All right, but I know of a couple of Christians. During that even recession time, their payment was coming on the door. Payments who are coming in flying in through checks. I'm speaking of practicality. I've known of people uh, who have shared with me, Pastor, what is recession? We are under Jesus' economy. What the confidence they have. Right? We are in the economy of Jesus. Amen. Why are we bothered about this world's economy? And during this recess recession, we saw how businessmen were receiving their payment. There was no excuses of no payment. Why? confidence in the Lord. They did not worry. They did not worry and said, how many payment are going to come? 
all right, finding ways out. But no, they had confidence in the Lord, and they knew they didn't want to throw away their confidence, knowing there's a great reward waits for them. So, friends, three things: remember, don't tolerate anxiety. All right, have the peace of God. Guard your heart and your mind. Renounce worry. All right, and the third one is that do not throw away your confidence. With that next week, you'll see how the supplication prayer begins again. Let's go to the Lord and pray.